Well, the first thing we're going to do when we uh, collect images for the guide is try to find a good source. Generally speaking, Google Earth is pretty good. Uh, there's definitely different years because as you can see here, there's some hidden features in the shadows. So we kind of have to look back at different years. Uh, not necessarily the winter. It's not going to be very good for us. But we can look back and hopefully find an image that has some of the features that are missing or in the shadows. And what we're going to do is collect both sets of images, the good ones that we want to use, and the images here that have the features that we're missing. Now what we want to do next is a little bit of image cleanup. None of these images are going to be perfect. Um, generally there's golfers and golf carts and other things. What we want to do is get rid of the golfers. So we're just going to clone them out here. Um, we're going to do the same thing in the fairways if there's any golf carts or anything else that we don't really want to show. Uh, just a little bit of Photoshop here and there and get things looking really nice. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of shadows in these photos, even though they're really nice. So what we have to do is find a way to remove those shadows. There's a couple techniques, but I'm not going to get into the details. But what we're going to do is use the other images for the location, the other years. And what we can do is make sure we can kind of clone and redraw any bunkers or rough, etc. As you can see from this, we are adding, not really adding the bunkers, but we're exposing the bunkers, removing the shadows and the extra overhang of the trees so the user can actually see the hole better. Now, if we zoom out, it looks pretty good. And as you know, the uh, book images will be very small. So um, once you zoom out, it looks like it was never edited at all. And if you compare this to the other years, everything's pretty much in the correct spot in exactly the same location um, with all the edits done, the people removed, and then the shadows removed as well. Now, remember, we had the same issue with the tee box. It was deep in shadows and tree overhangs, and as you can see from the previous year, we can see the T really well. So we'll outline that. We'll make it look like the new uh, image with similar techniques, and we will be able to see the T box. The next thing we want to do is define the green edges a little better. Sometimes the edges are a little mushy, depending on the type of grass and the fertilization and things like that. So the colors are hard to distinguish. Um, it's a little easier if you can actually see the margin of the green uh, in the book so you can understand where the green is and if how big the apron is and things like that. Sometimes it's not possible, but in most cases you can better define the margin of the green with a little bit of a different color to make things look a little bit better and it's a little easier to distinguish the actual edge of the green. Now the next thing we want to do is ensure that the 150 yard markers and the 100 yard markers are in the correct location. Have you ever had your ball land exactly behind, beside the 150 marker, hit the perfect 8 iron exactly 150 yards and you're 5 or 6 yards deep or short? It's true. Not all markers are in the correct location. Now in this case the 150 marker is bang on, but if we measure the 100 yard marker, it looks like we're out by about four yards according to the GIS system. So we're going to have to make a little bit of an adjustment when we do put in our marker. So what we're going to do now is move back to Photoshop and make sure we can find those 150 markers and 100 yard markers and we're going to burn those right into the image. So when we put them in the guide we can put the symbols on top. Okay, so we're going to just burn that right into the image. And if you remember, we do have to move the 100 marker slightly due to that four yard difference. So we're going to do that. And now we have the exact location of those markers so we can put the symbols on top in the guide. The next thing we want to do is start measuring to different obstacles, bunkers, carries, things like that. Uh, to get those yardages exactly perfect. So we're going to measure here to that bunker. And if you remember, we really can't see the T-box. So we're going to have to switch years. 
to go back to the year and we're going to do all of our measurements from that front margin of the t-box in this case because that's the good spot that we can see really well so in this case i think we're at 223 yards and we also measured from the t-box to the front of the green and that yardage is 267 yards Now we're going to measure the green depth and we need to ensure that we're measuring this green depth along the correct line of attack or the angle. In most par 4 and par 5 holes we're going to measure that from approximately the 150 marker. In this case the most logical spot would be the 100 yard marker because this is a very short hole. Then we have to rotate this view to ensure that we're getting exactly the right angle. And then we just go ahead and simply measure the margin from the front of the green to the back of the green. And that will be the green depth that we will show in the guide. In this case, we're about 19 yards. The GTA Am Tour team does a ton of work to gather the pin locations for each event. Those pin locations are given to all the players in the form of pin sheets. We also add flags to the green images in the guide in the exact pin locations for each event, for each hole. The pin locations are added in exactly using the angle of approach and the green depth and horizontal and vertical lines. What we do is we measure the depth or the first measurement. In this case, we're measuring in 10 yards. Then we're going to determine an exact horizontal line to the left so we can determine where the margin of the green is right in this location. Pick that point and then we're going to measure five from the left edge. Pick our spot and that is the location of the flag and the flag will appear in that location in the guide. Now we're going to assemble everything into our template. Of course, we're going to need the course name and the whole number with the par, of course. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is add our images. So there's our green image, our whole image, and then we're going to add in the description. A lot of work goes into adding these descriptions as the information needs to be sourced from the internet or from the golf course itself or maybe talking to the pro or talking to other players who have actually played the course. Sometimes someone actually goes out, plays the course, takes notes, takes photos and assembles all that information when they get home at night. Now the yardages for each hole are established by the GTAM team. A lot of work goes into this to ensure fairness for each flight and a good consistent length of golf course for each event. And of course, we're going to add in our distance measurements, our 150 and 100 yard markers, as well as the green depth, and of course, the flag location for the event. Once the draft is complete, the pins are sent to the GTA AM team for a pin audit to ensure the exact location is correct for the event. Now there's still more to do. We assemble all sorts of great pictures from previous events of the golf course, from advertisers and sponsors, and we create a unique cover for each event, sometimes including the order of merit status and other items that are pertinent to that event. As well as creating these great relevant cover pages, we also include advertising and sponsor pages. So please check these out and make sure you support our sponsors. Also included is some important information such as notice to competitors, any possible protocols that need to be followed, any information regarding the host club, or any other pertinent information for the event. Now you can either download this to your phone or print it. Remember to check out the overview check out the yardages, make sure you read that description, there's good info in there, double check that green complex and the green depth and use this info to shave a couple strokes off your next round.